It is uh, my great pleasure to uh, welcome to Firebrand and Rock Pose Roulette, the man who bangs the skins in the band, Gaia, welcome to Rock Take Pose's man. Roulette. Thank you very much, Dan. It's uh, a pleasure to be on your show, and uh, I really appreciate it. It's great to get you on. Um, as you know, I'm a huge fan of the band, as are many of the presenters on this station, and... Nice to see that you've got a second album out, and I really, really like it, I must say. It's uh, good, honest, hard rock, with just enough of a twist of humour in it, I feel. Well, that's very uh, very nice of you to, uh, to say, and... Uh... Well, I think you, uh, I think you got it right there because you know uh, we are uh, uh, from a very small place. You know, it's not much happening here. So if we are to en entertain ourselves, we uh, we have to keep the humor. Right. I, I take it all those dark nights and whatever. So it's basically um, an enormous amount of alcohol. I I would expect to just to help ease things through the winter time. Absolutely, it's a very hard life living in Norway, but uh, we all do our best, and uh, so far, so good. So, how did um, the band come about? How did you guys get together? Uh, we were just uh, a bunch of friends, friends actually. We started in '98, uh, and uh, we just started like uh, some kind of a cover band. We played songs by ACDC, Motorhead, uh, The Rods, uh, a Beatles tune i think too and uh, we just played around and uh, and had a good time and uh, in 2002 we decided to to take a uh, uh, vacation to put it that way and uh, we started again that one lasted for eight years a little bit longer than any any, any one of us would have thought i guess but right. uh, we started again 2010 and and the last four years has been uh, amazing well, I was going to say, I mean, for those four years, you've packed in already two albums and gathered yourselves um, an awful lot of uh, people who appreciate the band and, uh, so I say, quite a large fan base now. Yeah, it's been absolutely mind-blowing. And uh, the first album we did in uh, 2012 called Rocks uh, was uh, actually so something we just made for uh, ourselves. Uh, okay. To start with, we, we just wanted a... A cool record at home we could listen to whenever we wanted for as long as we wanted and uh, we started to ship it around a bit and, and uh, reviews and the reception was uh, fantastic so uh, then we thought that uh, we need to explore this and, and see we, how far we can go so we need to make another one and uh, we just did. Indeed. So um, obviously there's a gentleman involved in uh, the production of this album who was involved in another album which I really, really like, and that is Mr. Bo Hill. And how did you get uh, get him involved in the project? That's really funny. I'm, uh, I'm a, a big fan of everything uh, concerning record productions. Um, I obviously love the music, but uh, mm. I also uh, are very interesting in everything going on behind it and uh, Bohil has been a favorite of mine since uh, first time I heard Rat and uh, uh, I just sent him a, uh, an uh, email I uh, sent him two songs from a uh, demo we made uh, more or less drunk in 2000 and uh, told him uh, they would be re-recorded and everything and, and uh, you know luckily he said yes and uh, he's been uh, uh, a great uh, help for us and also a great friend he's uh, he did something um, um, to me personally on this album where I was uh, a little bit sick before Christmas uh, and uh, he's just a uh, amazing guy and uh, what he did uh, is something that uh, no one else uh, does I think I, I, can, I can't tell you but he's a fantastic guy and we are very, very lucky to to have him uh, on board. He does seem to be a very accommodating guy, and I suppose some people would think that uh, a producer, obviously his fame, would be someone you couldn't approach, yet um, I've heard from other people who've obviously had uh, dealings with him and uh, where he's helped them with their own releases have just said exactly what you've said. Um, incredibly friendly guy, incredibly helpful, um, very energetic in the input he puts into the band's projects. 
absolutely and uh, that's exactly what he he did with uh, for us too in in the beginning you know he he, he kept sending me emails with uh, with uh, hot tips uh, and and stuff and uh, he is truly a man i uh, appreciate very much and uh, next year he's uh, coming to europe and uh, he uh, guaranteed that he would uh, come and see uh, our practice room so if that happens it will be the day I was going to say that will be um, one hell of an experience if nothing else absolutely uh, you know I don't think Bow Hill has ever been uh, he has ever never been in Norway and uh, I don't think uh, a producer of uh, his size has been here ever uh, either so uh, I think we're going to take advantage of that no, I, I should I should take advantage with both hands. Uh, those sort of kind of things do not happen very often. <laughs> let, yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, what I, chance do you get? What sort of opportunity do you get to actually uh, play gigs in? And obviously, I say because uh, as we know, Norway is not a particularly large country with um, and it's quite a sort of spread out population. Um, so, what sort of opportunities do you have for you guys to play there? <clears throat> We have a, um, a booking agency called Live Wire Booking who has helped us a lot and uh, we just play wherever we can and uh, I really don't think um, there's many other bands uh, in Norway who's uh, driven uh, the mileage uh, we have the last uh, few years. We we play wherever, wherever we can and uh, uh, last year we played um, a place uh, way up north, we drove for uh, 20 hours. We played uh, two hours sh show. We uh, rested a few hours and drove 20 hours uh, back home. Wow! Uh, and uh, and uh, some people, you know, uh, told me, why did you do that? All that work for for so little. But you know, it, it all comes down to that. Those people cannot. We can't expect those to be hamburger fans if they don't hear us. So. We'll go wherever uh, anyone wants us. Well, at the end of the day, um, it's always a fine line. Obviously, you know, people don't just record music uh, for fun all the time. You know, there is the commercial side of it. But yeah. there is the whole point that if you're not enjoying doing it, then really what is the point in doing it in the first place? That's uh, exactly right. And uh, we uh, most certainly enjoy what we do. And uh, we are more or less daily surprised about the feed feedback we get and uh, you know it's a uh, um, fantastic inspiration we uh, we don't aim to stop now i can tell you well so going back to the album i mean <clears throat> as i said at the start i mean it is just a good honest solid hard rock album which is um probably why i suppose i'm a little bit biased because i'm a fan of the first album but that doesn't always equate to the fact that i'm um, set out to always like every release that a band does. I always approach it with, um, shall we say, an open ear and open opinion. Yeah. However, this album hit me straight away. I mean, I heard, obviously, because um, uh, you and I chat on Facebook and whatever, and I also heard two or three tracks before the album came out, So, um, which was which was very good of you. But, I mean, that title track, I mean, if that doesn't grab you, then I, I think really you need your ears cleaning out. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. we all grew up uh, in the eighties, you know, and and uh, we are uh, very colored uh, of everything that happened in the eighties. Mm. And and the eighties, that decade was all about having a good time, you know. Absolutely. Uh, the, yeah, there was not nothing bad going on in the eighties, and uh, when you're colored by that, you know, uh, you, you you tend to take that with you and. Uh, uh, I think the, uh, the King of the World track is uh, something that uh, actually Bo Hill uh, said when he heard it that if we had released this album in 1988, we'd, uh, it would have been uh, we would have been instant worldwide dominators, and and um, that's very nice of him to, to say. And uh, it's a little bit too late now, but I think that song especially is very much in the vein of the 80s. You say too late now. I, I get what you mean by saying too late now. I mean, the, the market's never going to be, and the scene's never going to be like it was um, back in the late 80s, early 90s. However, oh. and I've said this on numerous occasions now, oh. the rock music market in Europe is growing and growing at um, a very, very healthy rate indeed, helped no ends by, obviously, all you Scandinavian bands who, are, who keep uh, insisting on releasing such good music. So... 
you, you come into a marketplace which is sort of fairly much sort of open-armed and ready for a release such as this. Yeah, you have a good point, and, uh, and uh, thank God for that. And that's why we um, wanted to release uh, a second album, because we, we noticed that uh, there might be a possibility after all. And mm. uh, none of us expect to be millionaires. Uh, no. Uh, but uh, if we could, uh, if we could uh, explore this uh, for a year or two and, and make a decent living, it would be a, an old dream come true, you know. And uh, we uh, we have a small chance, and we'd like to ex- explore that. Well, if nothing else, you know that you've um, done what you wanted to do, and and have enjoyed every minute of it doing it. And the, the fact that like, you uh, had a second but, chance, as it were, to do that um, speaks volumes. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, we have a song on the album that uh, some start up. I, I did it all. Thank you and good night. Indeed. Yeah. Speaking of the tracks on the album, <laughs> I um, I'm going to jump to the bonus tracks if I can, because the <laughs> first bonus track on the album is by one of my all time favourite bands, and yeah. it's a very interesting slant that you've put on. For those of you who don't know, it's White Snake's Wine, Women, and Song um, off one of my favourite White Snake periods. And you've put a really interesting slant on that song. Thank you very, uh, thank you very much. That's very nice of you to say. And uh, uh, that's one of my uh, favourite White Snake songs too. Uh, actually, I've been I've been digging that, digging that song since uh, it was released. And, uh, mm. um, you know, we just wanted to, to, to see what, uh, we could do with a song like that these days with uh, you know updated sound and uh, and uh, we just had a fantastic time recording it and uh, um, through our uh, our uh, common um, designer uh, Hugh Gilmore in England he uh, I shipped uh, the song uh, to him and he and he shipped it to Mr. Coverdale and he listened to it and. Uh, he thought it was uh, just a great version, and uh, he really appreciated us uh, wanting to to do a cover of White Snake, and uh, I think that's fantastic of him to do. And uh, the song is what it is; it's almost uh, messing with something sacred, I know. But uh, if you no pain, no gain. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, I'm glad you brought up Hugh Gilmore because um, that, that was one gentleman I was going to mention because obviously uh, you flew over to the UK to meet up with him. Yeah. Um, that must have been a bit of experience because uh, for those of you who don't know who Hugh Gilmore is, you will certainly have seen um, plenty of his artwork. I mean, the the amount of um, albums and promotions that he has worked on is just ridiculous. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I think he's uh, doing a great job every time. I haven't seen uh, a really poor job uh, by him uh, at all, I think. And uh, uh, he's worked with everything from uh, Uriah Heep to Bruce Dickinson and uh, Led Zeppelin, you know. And mm. uh, and he's also the... Um, uh, the main uh, designer for White Snake these days, and uh, him that's right. and, he did, he and did uh, the Dan Coder has become good friends, and that's why uh, we got that con- connection with uh, One Women and Song. If I go on to the second bonus track on the album, um, Strong Man. Um, that's, a, that's a song for you, huh? <laughs> I, I, uh, that, I, I certainly don't look like the gentleman in the video for that song, that's for certain. <laughs> So it looks. I mean, the video is great because obviously, uh, again, um, it, it, it's something which is is a little bit different. I mean, how on earth did you get to get all tied up with with the whole strongman uh, sort of scene, as it were? That is uh, uh, a rather strange story. I, I was in Oslo uh, last uh, um, summer, two years ago, and uh, uh, I was walking. I was just walking the streets, and uh, I saw this extremely big man among all the other folks there and uh, and um, I went over to him and I heard him uh, talk in his phone and um, I recognized the voice of um, of um, Mr. Viking uh, Carlson uh, 
and then I, I knew he was working with uh, Norwegian Television, and I thought that he could be a uh, good guy to know. So I just went straight over to him and started to talk to him. And uh, luckily, he liked rock and roll, and uh, one thing led to another. And uh, all of a sudden, he uh, called and asked if uh, he could use uh, a song from a rock album as um, a new uh, theme song. Right. And, uh, and uh, that would be great, but I uh, suggested that uh, we made a new song, and uh, we did, and he lived uh, uh, close, uh, not far uh, from the studio, so we got him in the studio, and uh, he s spoke a few parts, and uh, it all turned out uh, great, and uh, so that's the new theme song for the Norwegian Strongman uh, Association. I was going to say, because I mean, he is such a, he's a big guy, and I mean, he's... Um... Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the video, pop over to Humbucker's website, which is humbucker-rocks.com. Go over onto the media section and just have a look at this guy in the video pulling trucks and other ridiculous things. Um, he's, yeah, I can see why they call him the Viking. He, he, he probably carried the ship on, you know, to the sea, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, he is unbelievably uh, big. Yeah, um, I had uh, the um, pleasure of... Uh, um, learning him how to get the haze right in the studio, and so I I had to stand behind beside him, you know, and and point exactly when he should uh, say hey. Right. And uh, when I stood b beside that guy, I looked like a feather for uh, from a bird's ass. <laughs> he, he was extremely big, and and because you're not exactly not... short. I mean, you're what a six foot or what have you. Yeah, but he's he's taller and he's extremely tall. He's very wide. His muscles are big. He's a really big guy, but uh, again, he's a fantastic guy, and uh, he appreciated what we did for him uh, just as much as we appreciated what he did for us. So, so it was all a uh, fantastic uh, experience. And of course, it's all good promotion for the band as well. Absolutely, that's why we did it. I must admit. Well, well, like I say, it's been an absolute treat having you uh, on the show. I've been meaning to get in the show for ages. Obviously, uh, you and I waited until the album was out, and I'm just really pleased that uh, the album is doing well for you guys because uh, you are a firm favourite over on Firebrand, and we do like playing you on the station. And I wish you all the success with this album, and all I'm going to say, and nag, is obviously as soon as uh, it has died down sight on this, I hope you guys get yourselves back in the studio and get another album underway. Um, that's very nice of you to say, uh, Dan, and uh, I, we all appreciate it very much, and uh, we we have all um, seen and, and heard um, the job uh, Firebrand are doing for Hamburger, and uh, we are very uh, we are very touched about it. We uh, we think it's great that you guys want to play our music, and uh, we will um, we will definitely make one more record. That's for sure, because uh, we need to do that, you know, to to build on what we have today and. Mm. Uh, but uh, maybe to 2015, maybe next year. We'll see. Indeed. Well, Gaia, thanks ever so much for coming on the show today. I say, uh, no doubt I'll be speaking to you again pretty soon. And I say, all the best of luck with this album. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm very uh, pleased to have been on your show. Thanks very much. Cheers, Neil. Cheers, cheers. Bye-bye.